Hi everyone and welcome to the start of chapter 1. In this first chapter we'll be covering how to create the characters for our game, talking about how we replicate their shooting and movement for our characters. So in this first part we'll be taking a look at setup for the character, looking at how to create the first person and third person point of views for our players. So let's jump straight in. So to get things started we're starting off here with the first person template that you find in Unreal. Now we're starting with this because it has have a few things set up for us already that we can happily just use and carry on from. Now for this you also need access to a third person mannequin and with some animations already attached to it. In this case you can happily find yourself over to the Anim Sata pack from Epic Games themselves on the marketplace. It's completely free for you to download and to use. So give that a download and then add it to your project as well. I'm going to do it right now. With that now inside our project, we have now got access to a UE4 mannequin in a third person viewport, as well as some loads of animations that we can use. Now we need this because in the multiplayer game, not only do you have your own arms to worry about, but you want to see the other persons uh, in your game as well, and you have to see their full body. And in our game here, we're also going to use it to see our feet and legs as we're running around. Those can be used for various different things. Now we don't have to worry about retargeting or anything like that because they are going to be two separate meshes anyway on our character. It doesn't matter that they're two different ones. So the first thing we need to do is go and edit our first person character here. So we're going to go into this. And we'll look at what code we've got here. Now we can you know, first of all gut a lot of this code here. We don't need it for our particular use. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the begin play and the reset VR code. As we're not using VR or anything with head map displays. And we're also going to get rid of the spawn projectile here because we're going to be changing the weapon system ourselves later. The rest of this you can leave as is. Now you also do need to go to the construction script and delete this code here. And we also want to go to the viewport and make sure we delete the motion controllers and everything attached to them. All you're left with are just the standard arms and the gun that you get with the template. So in here we're also going to be adding another mesh and this mesh is going to be the third person template. So we're going to go to our main capsule component here go to add I'm going to choose skeletal mesh and this is going to be our third person mesh I'm going to call it third person mesh and on the right hand side here we can choose what skeletal mesh we want to use I'm going to click on this and choose our SK mannequin this will be the one that came in with our anim starter pack now obviously if you're using other meshes from the marketplace of your own feel free to use them in this place if you like if not you can always replace these later on when you do get them so we're going to just bring them down inside the capsule and turn them around to face in the correct way. But the first thing to worry about when doing a first and third person combo here is obviously we don't want to put him dead center because the camera is going to just see the back of his head. We don't want. So what we need to do is actually move him back a little bit. And this guy is going to form our legs. So we're going to hide part of his body. We're going to bring it back here. Roughly there I think it is. And then we're going to go to the event graph. And create a new begin play event. And on this begin play, you're going to drag out your third person mesh. And in here, we're going to drag this out and hide bones by name. And we're going to hide all the bones connected to the spine 01 bone. This. So now, if I were to go into this game and push play, I'll look down, I can see my hips and legs. Great, but I don't want to see the hit inside my own body. So I need to move him back a little bit more. So that knowledge in mind, which a little bit more back. And we can also give this the standard animation blueprint that comes with the Anim Starter Pack 2 to help us skip a few steps. We can just go to here and use a standard UE4 ASP to animation starter pack one. Check this out. Look down and there are my legs. So we've got a few things to worry about here in that we've got our legs showing but we've also only got the shadow of our legs showing which kind of looks weird you just want, you want actually the whole body to be shown. So we need to make our, another mesh just for our shadow. Let's go into our first person character here and this third person mesh here I'm going to duplicate. Duplicate this out and this will be my shadow. And on here I'm going to keep this exactly where it is right now but this one is not going to have its legs hidden away. 
Instead, we're going to keep it there and hit play. And if I go down, you can see I've got full shadow. But what is actually happening is I can see the other hands of that mesh as well, which I don't want. I don't want to see those hands. I want to use my first person hands. So if we go into that mesh that's being used for the shadow and search for its rendering details here, main pass, you'll see the option to render in main pass. Turning this off basically tells it not to render this at all, but it will still keep its lighting data. So you keep getting the shadow. If I push again, see down. I can only see one pair of arms and I've got the shadow there looking all normal and lined up. Now we still don't have a third person mesh for our two player game. So if I were to play this in two player, you do that by going to active play mode and changing the number of players here to two and change the net mode from play standalone to play as listen server. And we do new editor window. So here it will spawn two characters and obviously it looks kind of odd. You've got character like that and you've got character like this. Okay, it kind of does look weird. So what we need to do is change the way and we render it in our third and first person viewports. So everything that we see here, we want to render only as the owner. So you, as the owner, you're the only one who can see these things. So let's click on the shadow, third person mesh and the mesh 2P. And we're going to search for details here, owner. And we'll click on only owner C. That means whoever owns this particular pawn is the only one that can see these particular objects. Now we also, for the gun here, as you can see it's hovering around. We need to make sure it's attached to the correct slot. So we just need to make sure it is already parented, or sorry, child with a parent of mesh 2P. And go to parent socket, click on a little magnifying glass, and you can choose grip point. And if it goes up like this, it's just because of the offset. Let's go to location here and just clear the offset for location and rotate. Perfect. And this gun you also want to have owner C. Only owner C. Like this. So in the game now, if you were to push play in this two player mode, you will not see the other player as of yet. They're there. Collision works, but we can't actually see them. So obviously we need to add in a model for the third person character to be visible to us. So on the player character, we're going to go in here and go to the viewport. So these are for the owner. We now need to make one for the non-owners. So I'm actually going to change the name of this third person mesh here to be actually named it legs mesh. Appropriate. Uh, and we're just going to duplicate it. And this would be called the third person mesh. But this one, we want to make sure the owner can't see. The owner no C. So turn off only owner C and turn on owner no C. We also want this one to actually be inside the capsule because this is where the players, other players, are going to be aiming at to shoot them. And the the thing that's going to detect damage is going to be this capsule here. So we want to make sure the thing they're shooting at is actually inside the capsule itself. And this is the final setup of our character. So if I were to push play, we can see two characters on the screen. I can look down and see my own legs and shadow, and he can see his own legs and shadow. But I can only see him. Obviously, his gun is missing. We need to add the gun in, but that's it. So for the gun, much like how we've got like two copies of the body, we also need two copies of the gun. What well, and they're both for visual needs. Okay, so uh, it's only for visual uh, representation of what the character is actually holding. So here we've got FP gun. We're basically going to duplicate this. This will be TP gun. Now, if this is just a temporary placeholder. We will be replacing this with a whole weapon system later on. But for now, we're going to drag that onto our third person mesh. And we're going to go to its uh, attachment settings here. And over here, we need to add it to a socket. Now, at the moment, there is no socket for our hand to hold this gun. Let's make one. Let's go into our third person mesh and open the mannequin up. To add a socket to your mannequin, you just go find the hand we want to put it in, which is going to be the right hand. And right click on this and add socket and we'll call this one grip point as well it's the same name as the other one now if we're adding a socket it is useful to have an animation already set up for the character so if you go up to the top left you'll see preview animation click on this and we can just choose an idle pose 
And we'll do idle rifle hip. And I'm going to pause the animation. Help me just align this up. Because if I right click on grip point now. I can add a preview asset to see the positioning of the socket. I'm just going to search for the gun. And you'll see FP gun. And so you can see here I just need to rotate the socket around. Move it back and forward a bit. Make it fit in our character here. Now unless the character has been made with the gun specifically in mind, you may find that it won't be an exact fit. But you're looking for just the best fit possible. Remember that this guy is running around quite fast, so you don't have to be like pinpoint exact. Um, it's not up for the not, players not going to really see up close on it. Um, but that's looking okay. Get a little bit further in. Like so. Okay. So that's called grip point. So if I now go back to my character, click on my TP gun, and on here. I'm going to change the parent socket to the grip point. There it is. So you need to change the offsets to be zero zeroed. Okay. Now this gun is also going to be owner no C. I'm going to do owner, turn on owner no C, and then turn off only owner C. So now I can see the gun as my own character. I can see their gun, but we don't see two guns on each. Now we have the end of part one. We've now got our characters set up and ready to go. In the next part, we're going to work on their aiming so we can see the characters aim at us in the game in both the first and third person point of views replicated. So you can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Over there, you find all my videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. I'm saying massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And make sure you check out Fireteam right now over on Steam. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. I'm ready to play now, put me in the game now I came here to prove it, I'm ready to do it, I can't be afraid now Put me on the stage now, I'm ready to rage now I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop This time, like the last time, you better get ready